Babies are atheists. I've seen a lot of people gang up on Bionic Dance lately. I guess I can understand why, but if you watch Bionic Dance's channel at all, proper word use is kind of one of her major sticking points. She's very big on this. So get off her case. That's kind of the channel she has. Seriously, it's not like we're doing anything massively political here. It's not like we're Eugenie Scott or Aaron Ra defending evolution in court. We all have hobbies on here and hers is word police. What does my dressing up like a Mormon and singing kids songs really have to do with long term issues? Our job on YouTube is to change the language and change the mind of others. Get over it. If you're bored of her stuff, there are a ton of atheists on YouTube you can watch instead. However, let's look at the problems in this debate. Babies lack a belief in God, which is why the argument of babies being atheists has always been a form of a geek joke. No one really uses this argument unless someone starts confusing the definition of atheists with anti-theist. Anti-theism being actively opposed to theism, or Gnostic atheist meaning you know God doesn't exist. However, language is fluid, and just like how theory has different meanings if you're in the science field or the public circle, atheist has also been given multiple meanings. Atheist in Greek means lacking a belief in God. And just like theory, the meanings of atheism has changed in common usage to having a wide range of meanings from anti-theist to nihilism. This modern YouTube generation is trying to use the original meaning of the Huxleyan agnosticism and Greek atheism. Defining terms is a part of the campaign strategy, just like how socialists, communists, and Nazi were all thrown around at Obama and the Democratic Party by the GOP when actual socialists, communists, and Nazis are completely offended by the comparison. But it worked in 2010 because if you can link established negative words to people or ideas, you win the argument in voting. In 2000, the Bush election actively consulted a firm that took polls on the most emotionally charged words and then used them in Bush's speeches to get him close enough to get in your tie. So the language war is sadly a bit important. Also, different groups of people belonging to a group name will evolve over time and still hold the same name. There were people on my video about religious liberals who vehemently claimed that a Christian is someone who believes in the Bible 100%. Christian means you're a follower of Christ, and just like a Buddhist, it doesn't mean someone who believes that the sutras are 100% infallible and the in-question word of the Buddha, even though there are some sects that do. Liberal Christians believe in the idea and philosophy of Jesus, but they know there is error in the books and they follow the parts they feel God is telling them is most important, along with other methods of epistemology. It's not up to you to decide that these people are now a different species of follower. They fit the criteria of a follower of Christ, except they understand history and reality a bit more. Nothing in the word Christian means you believe in the Bible 100%. Someone else took that word and won the word war in many people's minds. Hell, the Coptics, Ethiopian, Armenian, Greek, and Russian Orthodox all have different biblical canons they believe are 100% true and still call themselves Christians. The Gnostics are one of around 12 branches of Christians and they follow the Gnostic texts over the Bible that hadn't been formed yet and they ended up getting slaughtered because they were too far separated from what was voted on and negotiated on at the Council of Nicaea. Just like with atheists, you always need a modifier to define your species in a group. Babies being atheists would be a joke, but I know many fundies who believe that all things in nature, including rocks, trees, animals, and babies, instinctively know that God is real, and there are verses to back this up. It's the way they can believe that babies go to heaven if they die, and how we know God exists, we just don't want to believe it, so we choose not to. So let's look at some baby development psychology. First off, babies are born with little to no neural connections other than their smaller, more primal brains, so they can fit their heads through the birth canal. The baby has the intelligence level of maybe some lower level mammals, if that. It is atheistic, amoral, epistophistic, 
nihilistic, and every other non-thing that requires a mature frontal cortex. It does, however, have natural instinctive biases as its reptilian brain is fully working for fight or flight. It doesn't have object permanence and thinks if you leave the room you suddenly cease to exist. Cover its eyes and the universe ceases to exist. The baby is completely agnostic and an amateur scientist in the purest sense of the word. Experimenting, getting feedback, analyzing the data, then trying something else. It doesn't have faith without evidence and it doesn't trust you for the first six months. That six months is the time it develops trust and the old fashioned idea that picking up a baby too much will spoil it has been overturned. Trust that young can increase emotional well-being and possibly IQ. Mind you, all cultures have different ideas on this subject and it cultivates behavior important to that society. As the brain develops, it then develops theism. The parents are gods and other grown-ups are lesser gods and the baby is hardwired to trust whatever they say to learn as much as possible and suck knowledge up like a sponge. They now develop, on top of their natural biases, conditioned biases. As Einstein said, common sense is just all the prejudices acquired by the age of 18. In the process, many of these conditioned biases that were useful and should be refined or dropped, but society and our family can use and abuse these biases in some very negative ways. Theism is one of these. Belief because someone told you that there was an even better parent that will take care of you for the rest of your life that you should obey. There are many natural biases that we are stuck with most of our lives unless we condition our brains to go against them. Our ape us versus them is a natural bias that causes war and racism, which was useful for chimps because the other groups of chimps were probably going to kill them. Assumption of design or intended purpose in non-design things for children is another natural bias that can persist if abused. Belief without evidence is a conditioned bias that we do not naturally grow out of without proper mental training. So we have three types of biases, natural bias as part of our evolution, conditioned biases that can be abused and extended from childhood to the rest of your life, and conditioned biases that do not leave without effort. As you get more and more certain of your reality, people tend to get set in their ways. Many people stop learning or questioning and are completely oblivious to their own biases and until they are aware, will continue to fall into many of the same mental traps. Non-believers took the name atheists, which is the default position for babies but not children. Bionic Dance took a step further and called herself an epistophist, meaning without faith. She actually is more of an anti-pistivist, but that's another story. What we need to get to is to move it out one more branch to anti-bias. We can't be a-biased, sadly, because no matter how much we study and know ourselves, we'll still be slaves to biases. We'll just be more aware of it. Faith is just one of many biases. Skepticism has been used to cover this, but just like with the word theory, skepticism has a different meaning in common speak, as being a climate change skeptic tends to mean denier. I looked into a Greek word of anti-bias, but the word for bias is freaking long and hard to say, so anti-bias skeptic is the best we can do, except we have to explain it's a cognitive bias we are anti. Just like with classifying an animal or even a Christian, you need several modifiers to describe what the person actually believes. So the most outspoken anti-bias skeptics on the internet are Anti-Citizen X, Painful Mass, and of course myself with my series Why Do Intelligent People Still Believe in Religion? On top of this, Science Bites discusses logical fallacies that are fairly natural as well. All links are in the bottom bar. We discuss natural biases, which are kind of the roots of all stupidity and error. Or in other words, as Bionic Dance puts it, don't run on automatic.